So our agenda today is pretty straightforward, right? Um, we're going to talk about MinIO for those of you who uh, who don't know us. Um, update us on update uh, folks who do know us on the commercial side uh, of the business. We're going to talk about our ambitions in the hybrid and multi-cloud, and those ambitions are pretty expansive. We want to make sure that everybody understands our strategy um, and, more importantly, why it wins. I think next we're going to go in deep into the features that require us um, that are required to be successful in the hybrid and multi-cloud uh, when it comes to storage. And I think it's going to be particularly instructive. It's, these are a lot of features that you probably know by name, but the nuances and subtleties of those features when it comes to the hybrid and multi-cloud world are going to be different than what you're used to. And so we're really looking forward to, to kind of engaging you uh, as delegates on that. Each section is going to have an accompanying demo, right? And one of the reasons for that demo is that too many storage companies sort of claim to be cloud native when in reality they're not. Uh, they make great slideware, but when it really comes down, uh, comes down to it, you can't ever touch the software, right? Everything, absolutely everything that we show you today is available today. Yes, it's new and amazing, but it's not the promise of something to come. It's sort of the MinIO promises, which is simple, powerful, performant, and ready for the enterprise now. So we're excited to do that. Uh, and Daniel's going to give us each one of those things as we go forward today. So there's three things that uh, we really want you to take away from this. And if there's only three things that you remember, let it be these three things. So first of all, that MinIO is uniquely positioned to win both the hybrid cloud and the multi-cloud. We're going to talk about the fractional element of a single public cloud and how we're looking at it more holistically. But we want to understand and make sure that you understand our position and our strategy in this. Next, we're going to cover the features that matter, right? The critical capabilities that are going to drive decision making over the next 12 to 18 months. And we're going to articulate why we think MinIO is the leader in that regard. And the third point is really we want to talk about really the, the commercial side of the business, right? So we have built a model um, that's a blend of open source via AGPL and a commercial offering via subnet that ex are at this point exerting a gravitational pull over the rest of the industry. It's forcing long-term players to go rewrite to be more cloud native. Um, it's forcing appliance vendors to rethink their hardware strategy and think about becoming software defined. Uh, and it's pushing everybody toward a much more robust performance story than they've ever had in the past. So these are the three things that we really want to focus on uh, and make sure that we uh, impart over the next two hours. So let's talk about uh, MinIO as a company for those of you who don't know us yet. So MinIO is a high performance Kubernetes native object store. We were born in the cloud. We started in 2015. Kubernetes containers, orchestration are the only things that we've known. And so we're designed for large scale data infrastructure. Um, and as a result, we're really focused on this concept of hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. We were built, uh, built up in the private cloud, but we've always focused on this element of being cloud native. And it's a huge part of our story. Performance is a big piece of it. And the thing that really drives us from a guiding principles perspective are three things. Um, and these are the things that we use as our touch points. So one is this concept of being cloud native. So again, given when we were started as a company, given the um, things that we have focused on, we only do one thing, that's object storage. Object storage is a RESTful API set that's guided us in this entire process. So we are cloud native and that's uh, everything that we do is viewed through that lens of automation and APIs and microservices. The next piece that guides us is performance. Everything that we do from SIMD acceleration to encryption across the board, we look at also through the lens of performance. So MinIO um, prides itself as being the fastest object store in the world. Right now we're doing our, our benchmarks for NVMe are at 171 gigs per second uh, on reads, 181 on, or 181 on reads, 171 on writes. Um, we do 11 and 9 reads and writes on, H, on, on just regular hard disk spinning disk. And those uh, benchmarks you know, are unchallenged at this point. And it's not just speed for speed's sake, right? Performance allows us as a company to basically expand the map in terms of the applications that you can target. High performance object storage allows you to go after AI ML workloads, advanced analytic workloads, all the application workloads. 
it's not just an archival story. It is an application oriented story. And that's what performance delivers. And that's why we're so focused on it. I think the last piece um, really comes down to simplicity. So MinIO is designed for simplicity. Simplicity is actually really hard. It requires discipline. It is the opposite of weak. It is actually powerful. And as the cloud has showed us, simplicity scales. If you think back to the origins of S3, right, simple storage service, it was simple. And that's what allowed it to gain so much traction so quickly. It's not simple anymore. But when it grew, it was simple. And so by being just so disciplined and relentless in our focus on simplicity, we desire to, to drive into our product those things that make it easy to adopt and reduce the friction associated with MinIO, whether it's on-prem, in the public cloud, or on the Kubernetes distributions. That's resulted in some breathtaking growth from our, from our side. Um, if you think about where we are globally, we are in every single continent, including Australia. 58% of the Fortune 500 run MinIO in, in, in some capacity. Two of the top five most valuable companies in the world are effectively wall-to-wall -wall MinIO at this point. We've had huge growth on the, uh, on the uptake side of things. So 63% increase in Docker pulls, right? So that's 230 million over 363 million where we are today at 593 million. So giant growth off of very, very big numbers. And we're just measuring you know, the Docker, uh, the public Docker sites, none of the private Docker registries as well. But more importantly, what we're seeing is net acceleration in that growth. So year over year, 63%, but 97% increase in the average daily Docker pulls. We're now up to about a million Docker pulls a day. And so you think about the, just the scope and the reach of that number. We're touching every single enterprise you can think of. We're touching um, home uh, hobbyists. We're touching uh, across the board applications uh, in the cloud uh, or on-prem. And that's driven our customer growth as well, which we're going to talk about here uh, in a second. But that's up 330% year on year. So it's a growth story that's based off of our ability to do one thing, object storage, and do it as well, if not better than anybody else on the planet. It's powered by something called subnet. Um, we're not going to go into subnet too much on this, uh, on this uh, instance of field day. Uh, we did so more when we were back on storage field day. But the subnet experience is the engine of success for our customers. It combines a worry-free commercial license that allows you to get relief from some of the more onerous AGPL v3 obligations. And it combines that with 24-7, 365, direct to engineer level four support. And what that means is that there are no escalations anymore. If you have a question, you'll enter it into our Slack meets Zendesk interface that we built ourselves, and you'll be immediately conversing um, with one of our engineers. You can exchange code snippets on there. Um, you can do binaries. You can talk about integration problems. Uh, it's a sort of an unlimited palette for you to solve production instances with your MinIO uh, in, uh, Min deployments. We also have added uh, automated diagnostics called Subnet Health, which allows you to reach deeply into the health of your system and very, very rapidly identify the root cause of any issues that you may be seeing, whether it's performance or security uh, or anything else. We provide architecture and security reviews here, and it's all priced as if it were like in the cloud, right? So transparent, cloud-like model. You can see it on our website, um, and you can go price out what it would be for you know, a petabyte, 10 petabytes, um, an exabyte, whatever it is you want to, uh, to build out, you can see what the pricing will look like on that. I have a question here. Uh, yeah. Going back to your point about the importance of simplicity and that it's required discipline to stick to that design principle and all that, what has it come at the cost of? Like, what did you have to compromise in order to adhere to that? Maybe features, functions that you that you have deprioritized versus some competitive offerings. Like, what does that mean? That's that's a great question. AB, do you want to take that? Yeah. It, it, like it, it, that's something that it will reflect in uh, whether you came in through community or as a customer, I can give some examples, right? Like very early on community was asking, Hey, we guys are all open source. We belong to the open source community. Why are you adopting a proprietary S3 API, right? Uh, we know how to design a better object interface, even simpler than S3. Why, but then uh, it, like it, if you had done that, we would all, as a community, we could have had control over the API specification, right? But here, 
uh, the, like even Swift API, there were many APIs, and then S3 was one of them. When community asked Swift API, what we told was pick one. It, either it has to be S, S3 API, Swift API, or one of these object st standards. If there are multiple ways of doing the same thing, it's not minimalism anymore. And then it naturally, we, uh, everyone gravitated towards S3 because S3 already established itself. It's not necessarily the best object interface, but it's certainly the most proven, uh, most uh, accepted standard. Uh, uh, like we all, all the time, we tell community, if you submit a pull request, you say you are adding some feature, it's more likely going to be looked at uh, with a lot of lens. You have to convince us why we have to add this capability as compared to you submit a pull request that removed some capabilities or removed some um, older code, we would readily accept it. We, uh, it, it, it takes a lot of discipline, like uh, Jonathan explained. It's hard to say no. Uh, and uh, even when it comes to customers, like customers would all the time ask, like in the early days, can you add NFS, NFS POSIX API? And we would tell them that uh, we we came from that background too. We certainly know how to build file systems and NFS server. But if I add NFS server, then I will give you a mediocre object storage and a terrible uh, file storage. Is that what you want, right? It's saying no repeatedly. It does cost you, uh, costs you uh, in some ways that you're walking away from opportunities, but then we, uh, we can only do one thing really well. Uh, it, it, the cost is actually, it's just, it takes a lot of discipline because you are mostly saying no. Uh, but I think in the long run, uh, everyone appreciates. Uh, even like customers would always ask for more features, but they will never tell you remove some features. And in the long in the long run, if you keep on adding, they will tell this product is so complicated, and they will drop you for the very same reason. Right? It, 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 that, for, that's why even I'm more directly involved on the product side. And uh, it, if it, saying no, we take a lot of beating with that, right? Jonathan? Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a great answer. I mean, um, I think if we had a, a dollar for every time we were asked to build a file system, um, even though, you know, AB's previous startup was Gluster, um, we could have funded a Starburst round. I mean, that's, a, that's how often we get asked. So, um, but yeah, it, it's about saying no, um, and it's about, um, you know, sacrificing what could be a quick and easy deal for the long-term success of the company. Thank you. So, um, you know, this is just a partial list. Um, people are, um, I, I'd say, almost obsessive about who our customers are at this point um, and understanding what our commercial growth looks like. Um, you know, everybody on here is either a, a, from a five to a seven-figure customer uh, of MinIOs, uh, and it's a very, very strong list, right? We have great coverage across financial services, healthcare. We are obviously very strong in the tech business, um, as you as you might imagine. Um, but we also power other people's services. Um, Seagate's Live Cloud, most notably, uh, you know, runs entirely on MinIO. Uh, and there's a number of others that are on this list where we're powering parts of their elements as a, effectively OEM um, uh, type of arrangement there. So um, this is a partial list. Uh, obviously, we're growing this um, um, all the time. We're well over 100 customers at this point. And um, we're excited about kind of the, the pace at which we're adding customers. Um, we think that's also accelerating as we um, continue to, to drive this. And, and we've done this again uh, in a very different model. Um, we don't have salespeople. Um, all of our um, customers have come inbound um, to us. They've used the product. They've validated it themselves. And they come in and they say, you know, we're putting this in production. AGPL, um, you know, has convinced us to uh, have a commercial relationship. So let's go do that. And so that's what the model looks like from our perspective. And it's a very different model than, than most uh, companies are built with. But it's one that we think is very good from a scalability perspective um, and very good from an efficiency perspective. And we're hyper-focused on that. 